Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to talk about how you can take your gameplay to the next level, specifically in competitive Fortnite. In the past, I've covered numerous topics like this, such as how to perform better in cash cups, how to practice like a pro player, and how to improve your game sense. What I haven't covered is the fundamental knowledge every pro player has regarding competitive that most of you do not. These are things like Storm Surge, the different ways to deal with it, competitive terminology, basically anything that pro players utilize or are aware of on a daily basis that the average arena player is not. My hope is that by teaching you guys about these things, you can start placing higher in events like the FNCS and become pro players yourselves. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. To start off, I'll cover one of the more advanced subjects I just mentioned, Storm Surge. For those of you that don't watch too many tournaments, Storm Surge is a mechanic in Fortnite that helps thin out the number of players alive. It was initially added back in April of 2019 as a way to encourage more aggressive gameplay and to help stabilize the in-game servers. The reason you've probably never seen it in your own games is that it only gets activated in stacked lobbies like those in the later rounds of the FNCS. Be aware though, that does not mean Storm Surge is only a feature in those competitive tournaments. Tournaments. Storm Surge is actually a thing in every game mode, including normal public matches. It's just very rare for it to come into play outside of scrims and grand finals. The way it works more specifically is that Storm Surge will kick in if there are more than 70 people left alive for the third zone, more than 50 people left alive for the fifth zone, and more than 30 people left alive for the seventh, as well as any zone after that. You'll actually see a notification for Storm Surge pop up called the Storm Surge Warning, the zone before it gets activated. It'll tell you how much damage you are above or below the threshold, as well as remind you to do more damage. Then, when the storm fully closes in and there are still too many people left alive, you'll see a different notification telling you Storm Surge has been activated. For example, say there's 82 people left alive as you're rotating to the second circle on the map. Because the storm has not started to close in yet, which you can tell from the green clock timer, there will not be a Storm Surge warning. The warning will only come up once the storm starts moving in, signified by the pink storm timer, and then the active notification will only come up once once that storm fully closes in and the third circle pops up. Anyone below the threshold at that point will be dealt 25 damage until they either get above the minimum damage requirement or until enough people die where it gets turned off. That damage by the way will be applied to their shield first, not directly to their health like the actual storm. Now, the most difficult thing about dealing with storm surge is trying to get above it early on. The number the threshold is derived from is the damage done from the last person above the maximum number of players alive at that point. So not only will you not know what the requirement will be as it's different every game and constantly changing, but you also won't know how much damage you've done prior to that unless you keep track of it. My biggest tips for dealing with Storm Surge are to plan ahead and not to panic. Most top tier pros like Booga and Mr. Savage have set routes they take each game to look for Storm Surge. That could mean rotating over to a nearby POI, building on top of a big mountain, or in the case of Creo and Bucky, trading tags with the team that landed with you. That's a joke by the way, you will get banned. Seriously though, you need to to be aware of exactly the way Storm Surge works. Notice in this clip how Kalazo is below the damage threshold, yet he's not freaking out or jumping into boxes like a maniac. Well, it's because he knows only one person has to die for Storm Surge to not get activated. Had he gone full psychopath trying to get one tag, he likely would have died or ruined his game by wasting all his mats and shield. So again, make sure you plan a route before the game starts to get tags, are cognizant of how many people need to get eliminated, and to watch analysts like Bala TW and Speedy Gonzalez who have in-depth videos and VOD reviews on this topic. Moving on, the next term I want to explain more in depth is the dead side. If you've ever watched pros play in scrims or hear their comms in tournaments, this is a word you've probably heard a lot. What it refers to is the empty or the least populated part of the circle. For those of you that have heard people say the congested side of zone, dead side is the opposite. And as a rule of thumb, you always want to avoid the congested side. The dead side will have way less people in it, meaning you'll be less likely to get griefed or to get served focus, and it's generally way easier to rotate through. The first thing you need to do though, is to identify the congested side as well as the dead side of zone. For mid and early game circles, aka anything before the moving ones, dead side depends on where the zone goes. Like in this case, the first zone pulls towards the southeast quarter of the map, meaning the dead side of the circle is the bottom right part of it. Everyone who landed in that area has already rotated towards the center of the map, and that leaves most of it open. On the other hand, the congested side is the whole top and left 
side because that's where everyone is rotating in from. Another example is the third zone of this match that goes straight south. The dead side here is the bottom side since it's farthest away from the center of the map, and the congested side is the top half. This is one of the more extreme cases where the dead side is literally wide open and the congested side is insanely packed, but that's why you want to do your best to avoid the congested side at all costs. As for the dead side of moving zones, luckily for you guys, it is much easier to figure out. Moving zones are the ones after the fifth circle that are completely in the storm. The reason why they're so much easier to identify than the prior zones is that moving zones are extremely tiny. Everyone in the game is going to be rotating into the same little circles and stopping as soon as they get into them. That means the front half of the circle that's closest to the area in zone will be the congested side, and the half behind that will be the dead side. You see how this zone is completely in the storm? That means it's a moving zone. Therefore, because it's a moving zone, the front end closest to everyone will be the congested side, and the half behind it right here will be the dead side. The thing about moving zones though, is reaching the dead side is extremely hard. Not only is it inside the storm, but it's also behind the front end of zone where everyone else will be holding you. That's why what many pros do is they'll use their launch pad for the first moving, but rather than staying inside the congested side, they'll go into storm, box up in the dead side, and pop floppers until the safe zone reaches them. This allows them to safely reach the dead side without having to rotate it on foot or worry about 20 people right in front of them. So even though it may be a little riskier sometimes, always do your best to identify and rotate to the dead side of circle. Next up is one of my favorite competitive terms called white lining. White lining refers to following the white line on your map to get into zone. Pretty simple, right? Well, not exactly. The problem with white lining rotates is it leads you to the congested side of zone. Just think about it. Even though it's constantly moving, the original white line on your map is the shortest route to the edge of circle. That means if you're rotating south like in the example we saw before, you're going to end up following an identical white line as everyone else on the northern part of the map. Additionally, by the time you get into zone, everyone rotating with you will be there and you will not have a good time. Something I picked up from NRG Zayt is to use the edge of the map to avoid white lining rotation. I believe Zayt was in his 6th or 7th game of the FNCS Solo Invitational, and as you can see, he takes a boat behind Sweaty to rotate. Usually because he lands at Sweaty Sands, he'll just rotate on foot through the center of the map. For this specific zone, however, he knows white lining will lead him to the congested side where everyone else from the Shark, the Lighthouse, and Pleasant Park will be. Thus, he takes the boat all the way down past Holly Hedges to the dead side and gets into circle hassle free. So the takeaway here is to always think about your rotations. Are you going to white line it to get in quick and establish a position closer to the center of zone? Are you going to stay near the edge of zone to get to the dead side? Or are you going to do a combination of them both? These are things you have to ask yourself every single game in order to take your gameplay to the next level. Second to last term I want to discuss is second height. No, that's not a play on words. The expression is second height or second high, and what it refers to is the layer and endgame scrims below high ground. In the past, I've always told you guys to not play second height. You'll get focused by the team on high ground, and you'll be forced to waste all your mats protecting your head. As you can see from RBK Arab's gameplay though, second height is also the best position to take high ground. If the high ground team is not properly focusing you, you'll have a great opportunity to win the match. All you need to do is get ahead of zone, apply pressure back on them yourself, and go up for height at the right time. So I know this one was one of the shorter ones, mainly since it's pretty self-explanatory. I just want you guys to know you don't always have to drop down from second height because a lot of the time it can actually be more advantageous than you think. The final term, which is more of a reminder, is the half and half zone. This is the community's name for the fifth circle of the game that's half inside the storm and half inside the safe zone. Oh, and in case you're confused, half and half zones are not a thing in normal public matches. They are only in arena, tournaments, and competitive settings. Anyways, the half and half zone can single-handedly make or break your game. Unlike moving zones that are far out for everyone, half and half zones will be really close for some people and really far away for everyone else. This is why pro players will position themselves on the edge of the fourth zone and essentially take the gamble to get the fifth circle. If they had positioned at the center of the circle like they normally do for the first few zones, then they would never get the half and half zone and would always be forced to rotate. By playing edge, however, you have just as high of a chance to get near zone, an infinitely higher chance to get in zone, but also an equal chance to get bad zone. So whenever you find yourself positioning for the half and half circle, play the edge of it, but don't leave the center of the circle if you're already there. Overall guys, that's everything you need to know to elevate your game 
gameplay in competitive Fortnite. All the things I went over, I learned from top tier pros and other coaches, and are things they use on a daily basis. As long as you actively practice them and try to incorporate them into your own gameplay, you will see improvements and better results. So, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using Coach Arian. Let me know down below if you bought the Recon Expert with it because I know a bunch of you did. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. Awesome.